All right, good morning. We are starting a new series. It is called Then Their People. Mm, it's going to be interesting. Hold on one second. Fans blow my Bible. Let's just turn it off. We're going to look at people that we deal with, and you might be one of them, um, that God's way of, and His Word and how that He would like us to, t- to um, interact with these people and um, the, the kind of the subjects that we're going to look at and them, their people, are today we're going to look at um, the overly needy, okay, how do you deal with overly needy people, um, we're going to deal with manipulating people, how do you deal with manipulating people? Um, how do you deal with hypocritical people? You know, that's why a lot of people won't come to church because there's so many hypocrites in the church. So how do you deal with them kind of people? You know, and then there's the critical. You know, the critical people that always got something to say about something, you know, and like, you, you, you know, you're probably watching online and you already got 15 reasons why you won't come to this church or any church, you know. You're very critical, you know. So we're going to look at God's Word and, and uh, um, some things that how He would like us to handle these people. And, you know, but the thing about it is that one time or another, you or myself, we have been those people whether you realize it or not. And you're probably saying, no, not me, not me. All right, yeah, let's really get real. You probably were at one time or another. If not, you might do it sometime in the future. But today we're going to really look at the subject here of overly needy people. Now, when you really think about needy people, you automatically go to the needy of financial situations you know that they're, they're needy in finances you know their 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 job's not very good or they got laid off or they're having some um, issues there um, with that finances but uh, but we're also want to look at the, the needy of of um, like the the addictions people that have addictions they're a needy people of 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 how they want stuff to get things to, to be stay to stay addicted um, to their to their substance or to their alcohol or to their pain and sufferings of how they they deal with stuff and then there's the needy of those who um, are emotionally distressed you know they're there's just always complaining about something they're they're always needing <coughs> they're always needing something of, of relationships or wanting you to always uh, uh, help them and do that you know they're 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 their life is really um, is lacking um, relationships and, and feeling like that. You're like, you don't pay me enough attention. I need you to come to me. You know, I need you. I called you. You never answered me. You know, those type of people that, you know, we're going to look at God's word and see how um, he is uh, wanting us to deal with those people. And maybe you're one of those people and maybe this will enlighten you on um, what God thinks about you um, and how he would like to help you get out of that situation. So, and one of the uh, things that we look at is uh, um, um, the problem with needy people is a lot of times is that, that if we don't help them in the right way, we can actually end up hurting them more, and if we are, aren't careful enough, we'll end up hurting ourselves and our family as well. I, I, I've ran into that so many times in my life where we got involved where we weren't supposed to get involved with and ended up causing financial distress in our family because God was saying, no, don't get involved, and I didn't hear it right, and I didn't pay attention to it right, or I just plain out just, I just thought it was a good thing to help, and in that, I, it, it ended up causing a problem in our family, and so in that, um, it, a lot of times in our lives, we got to pay attention to this is a very serious subject in that, that, you know, it's like a, uh, I was talking to my son earlier that, you know, about sometimes you just got to pay attention. You could be taking a test by God. And, you know, if you don't, if you fail the test, you're going to take it over again. Well, I don't know. Some of us can't really financially keep taking this test over and over again or emotionally. You know, so in that, we're going to look at some uh, two areas that God will um, want to wants to kind of uh, direct us, uh, where we're going to talk about the difference between relief and rest, 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 restoration. Let me get that out, right? You know, um, how we can help needy people is through re, uh, relief or restoration. First, we want to look at is we want to look at relief. What is relief? Relief is immediate temporary assistance 
you know, it's those uh, people that, you know, that had a fire, you know, and their house burned up and everybody rushes in there to help them with some clothes, you know, immediately or some food or a place to stay, you know, some finances to help stay at a motel or something like that. You know, they, they meet or, or tornadoes come in and swoop down in the neighborhood and take out some houses and uh, groups of people come in and, you know, to clean up and go through debris and you, and you help them with water and things like that or earthquakes or, or you know, even like death. You know, churches are really great, you know, with helping with there was a death in the family and they come in and they, they show up and help out around the house and clean the house or bring food and assistance there. You know, they help that immediate need right there or or dealing like with cancer or, or sicknesses like that, you know, where people come in and bring foods and things like that. You, you bring immediate relief. You know, and that's where God's saying, yes, that's, that's a good thing. You're doing a good job. You know, but here in America, we are really excellent at doing relief help. We, we, we really are. But here's where we're kind of lacking. We're, we're kind of lacking in this one right here. We're, we're lacking in restoration. Restoration is working with people to restore them to their God-given potential. Restoration is working with people to restore them to their God-given potential. You know, see, now the difference between this and restoration and then relief is restoration sometimes is going to take you a longer time to be with this situation. To be with this perfect example is an addict. An addict is, you know, you, you, they're addicted to drugs or alcohol or, or pornography or something like that. And they're, they're, they're addicted to this. And it's not like a quick fix. It's like you got to go to rehab and, you know, you got to help them and watch them and how. Because, again, they've got habits that they, they still feel like they got to manipulate it so that they can get high or they can get what they're, they're, they're wanting. It, you know, and so you're going to go with them through life and, in, 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 you know, it could be three months and they, everything seems good and all of a sudden, boom, they fall off the wagon, you know, and then you got to help them and get them back into the situations of, of you know, well, we got to put these guards up. You can't hang out with those people right here. You got to show them some tough love as well, you know, and, and you're going to, and it could take a year, two years, five years sometimes, you know, you're in it with them for the long haul, you know, or there's those people that are insecure, you know, they, they're, they're, uh, they're chronically chronically insecure person that, that you know to meet their needs you know they're always whining and crying their value they don't have no value and you got to step up as a friend and always and in, in, in encourage them of their value encourage them of their you know their potential that God loves them very much you know because of maybe something happened in their 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 younger years or something that where they they feel like they have no value and you're always doing things that to, to ensure them that God loves them and you're showing them God's word Word. Or, or those those people that are are that they're in debt, you know, and and you you long term, you know, a, a relief is not, you know, for them is like, you know, they come and borrow. Can I borrow five hundred bucks, you know? And if you do that, and then three weeks later they're coming back to you again. Can I borrow another five hundred bucks? No, no, no. That's not what God wants. God wants you to say to them, you know, to be truthful with them. No, I'm not going to give you five hundred bucks. What's your problem? Let's sit down and do a a a, a, a budget. What, what do you got coming in and what do you got going out? Why are you always wanting to borrow 500 bucks? Are you spending money you shouldn't be spending? Do you have something in your life that you should? Are, you're paying $585 a month for a car payment? Get real. You need to sell that $35,000 vehicle, buy you a $2,500 vehicle, and start paying off some of your debt. You need to be eating beans and rice and getting out of debt. Because God's word is very straightforward in saying that we should not be slaves to a lender. And that's what you're doing, and you're doing it in the wrong way. Because if you drive like no one else right now, you can drive like no one else then, later. So you pay off your debts. You start putting money aside to buy you a car that you won't have to have car payments. So you have to sit back and just say, you know what, for, for restoration, I'm going to show you how to handle your finances, how to handle your money. You know, the, the problem is today is when, when we want to help because we really do want to help, the challenge is by nature, most of us tend to want to offer relief when a lot of times the right thing to do is to restore. 
We're, we're in a position that we, we want to do things really quickly. Because again, we're the microwave generation. Everything's got happening. You know, we pull up the, to the, the, the window and say, give me my food now. Here's my money. I'm out of here. You know, we are the now generation of, of that. And, and, and God's word is really saying, no, your problem is something that relief is not going to help you with. It's restoration. It's to restore you. It's to fix you into the right way of doing things in life. And here's where we're going to get this from. We're going to get it from the story here in Acts chapter 3. Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. Acts chapter 3, verses 1 through 5. It says there in verse 1, One day Peter and John were going up to the temple at the time of prayer. At three in the afternoon. Now, a man crippled from birth was being carried to the temple gates called Beautiful, where he was put every day to beg from those going into the temple courts. Pause right there. Come back here. People that know how to beg, people that are always in need, are always looking for a relief. These, back in those days, these guys knew exactly there was three special places to go beg. One was the highway, where they knew people were coming and going out of town, walking in and walking out. You see those people up here by the Walgreens at the, at the light, standing there with their little sign. They're begging, asking for money. Please help me, I'm out of work, I, I, you know, whatever part of it. It could be true, could be not true. Got a family, three kids, you know. I, you know, we don't know that. But these guys were the same way. They knew that. Or they would beg in a, in a, uh, right outside of the homes of rich people because they thought that the rich people had a little bit more money to give, so they would beg there. But the prominent place that they used to beg was at church. Was standing, was, let, was being there because he knew that they were going in there and he could usually get the preachers coming in and out of there because they were good to boast. I gave him five bucks. What did you give him? You gave him a dollar. I gave more than that. You know, so it's like a little contest, puff up contest, who could give the most to the poor people or to the hurting people or lame people, you know, as they went into God's church, you know, to say, I'm a better Christian or I'm a better godly man than you or you, you know. So in that, they kind of figured that out. So he had a spot. He knew this spot. I can guarantee I can get my money every day because the church was open back in those days every day day at three o'clock they went in to pray so in that he's like i can get some money every day so you guys carry me there i'll pay you when i get back because i know i'm going to get what i need and i'll have some extra to pay you for carrying me there and carrying me back you know type of a deal so in that that's what's happening here all right let's go on verse three verse three says and when he saw peter and john about to enter he asked them for what what did he ask them for Money, yeah, that's right. He asked him for some money, you know. Yeah, you used to hear that song coming back from the 80s. You know, I was like, money, yeah. You know, verse 4, Peter looked straight at him as did John. Then Peter said, look at us. Hmm. Verse 5, so the man gave them his attention, expecting to get something from them. What was he expecting to get? money he's expecting to get some cash because why was he there he's always knowing i know if i ask that most of the times you know the bible says ask and you shall receive you know so hey i got this i'm gonna you know and he's like you know already starting to dick out and pull pull out his little percy thing there you know and say you know give me some you know i'm ready here you go put it right here you know so so he's in there so we go to verse verse six and it says this then Peter said, silver or gold I do not have, but what I have I give you. In the name of Jesus, what name is that? The name above all names, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Walk. Taking him by the right hand, he helped him up. And in instantly the man's feet and ankles became strong. He jumped to his feet and began to walk. Then he went with them into the temple courts, walking and jumping and praising God. Now, do you see here, verse, back in verse 7, he helped him up. God's word is teaching us to do what? Not give out a helping hand, but give them a helping up hand. 
that we are instead of to, to a lot of people being relief to them by just continually giving them money and shooing them off, that we should sit back as godly people and say, how can I help them up to be a contributor to society and honor God with their lives instead of being beggars and, and sitting back and taking and taking because God's word is shown that mankind is for getting involved. It goes all the way back to Genesis where he made Adam. And what did Adam do? He went to work. He contributed to the garden. And so in that, we're looking at this, this, this example of not giving a hand out, but giving a hand up. That's what ministry and followers of Jesus Christ should be all about. To help the needy, you need to be able to look at their situation, pray about it, say, God, how can I help them up out of that situation? So instead of, uh, you know, that, that, that idea of where they're, they're begging you for some money, you know, they, oh, yeah, can I get a hundred bucks? You know, I mean, I, I remember back when this one guy, I worked and uh, we were always out of town and he would come to me at payday, get his check and I'll let him at lunchtime go down there and cash their checks. He'd come back and he would give me like 60 bucks. He'd say, here, hold this till Monday. And I was like, why? He goes, just please do it. I'm like, okay. So I put it in my wallet. That's his money, you know. And then come Monday morning, we're just now getting up on the job and there we're getting ready to get our boots on. You know, like, he goes, hey, John, can I get that money? I'm like, yeah, what? what's this all about? And he goes, I don't have no more money. And I know if I don't put it aside, I'll have nothing to eat the rest of the week. Well, at least you're smart enough to do that. But where, what do you do with all your money? Well, what else why should I do? I, I party and drink. I'm like, well, that's stupid. You know, I mean, but, you know, but we would go, but people do do that. They do think that way. So it's the idea to say, how can I help them to restore their lives? So we're going to look at. Three prayers to restore people, to help them to follow Jesus Christ. First prayer we want to look at is, God, help me give people what they truly need, not just what they want. Acts 3, 6 says this, the Peter said, silver or gold, I do not have, but what I have, I give you in the name of Jesus of Christ of Nazareth, walk. What he needed to do was he needed to be able to be healed, get up, and walk. Some people, what they need is they need to sit down and do a budget on their finances. They need to be able to get out of debt. Some people, what they need to do is they need to learn a new skill and get out of this dead-end McDonald's job. And they need to find them a, a, a job maybe that will be construction or, or, or maybe with computers or, or something as that. They, they need to go maybe get into nursing or, or the pharmacy business there's a lot of money in drugs you know i mean legal or illegal but you know don't get into the illegal ones because you might find yourself doing federal time we, we don't want that for you you know no it's the idea that that you know again you're 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 seeing people come to you and say I, I need help with these finances i need help with my car payment i need help with my car insurance i need help with my 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 rent i need help with these things and we're continually doing search we're just meeting that need for that moment and not fixing them in the direction that they think right and saying i am going to do this now you know what i'm not going to give you that hundred dollars anymore but we're going to sit down with your finances and we're going to uh we're going to figure this out you know you again you you need to sell that car you need to sell some things there you need to uh, you know you need to do this you need to get in church and tithe you know part of your problems why you're losing money is because you know I, I remember back in the days you don't tithe you know it's like a, the car broke down that broke down furnace broke down the, the the refrigerator broke down so you know one way or another your your money's gone any if you don't start tithing because god says he blesses the tither so you know it's like that you, you're looking at those things and and so you're helping them out and getting up on their feet you're figuring out a situation next we want to look at is god help me stay out of your way by not continually rescuing people from their consequences you know i was watching uh forrest gump the other day we you know and they would say something to him and he says my mama says stupid is as stupid does you know and so it, you know you know god says in galatians chapter 7 uh, 6 
Chapter 6, verse 7 says, Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. I'm going to tell you it is a foundational thing across the thing. You may call it karma, but it's the same old, same old. God says what you sow is what you reap. You do something stupid, you're going to pay a stupid consequence. You know, you, you, you just, it's just it's going to be that way. You know, but the thing about it is in our life, we are... Uh, let's more or less, let's just focus more on parents. You may have adult children, you may have uh, teenagers, or you may have young people. But this is where it really starts at. It really starts at that parents think that they've got to protect their children or overprotect their children because they're going to get hurt or they're going to do some, something crazy. So in that we do these ideas of, of protection for, you know, this temporary relief and we're making irresponsible children. We're creating irresponsible children. Here are some of the things that how we start off with a young age of, of our protection of children. You know, first off, we want to we want to have our hands always on our children. So you know what? They created hands that you could put against babies so that they won't roll over and you know and, and suffocate or or they won't roll over and choke on their their slob or anything like that. They they really make these kind of hands to hold the baby right there on its side really neat huh you know and then there's this uh then they got this you know you got children who want to climb up out of their 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 cribs you know if you can't see that really here but you, uh, you guys will probably see it online better it's a better picture but there's a tent that goes over top of the crib it's a, it's like a little see-through tent and they got it on there like that and it keeps your kids from cl climbing out of there and falling on their head you know you know so they, they don't get hurt well this one dad he said he couldn't afford it cuz he had so many kids it, that he turned around and made his own if you can't see right there he's got bob wire fences and then he's got a little electric line there hooked to it so you know but the, the only fault he found in it was when they turned about 17 they started getting a little twitch you know, you know but other than that it worked out pretty good for him it keep him in there you know so so you know it, it's the idea of some some things that we're trying to protect our children, you know. And then there's this one. They call it the PPTP. PPTP. It helps them keep from peeing on themselves. It's a little TP that goes on them and it helps them to keep from shooting themselves in the eye, you know, from peeing on themselves. Really? You know, we're, we're way out of control. But then, you know, this is not how it's done. You don't take the teepees and put them where they, you know, God help this young boy, you know, in Jesus' name. You know, bless him. You know, because that's just not, that, that, that's just not what it's, it's for. So, so what we're looking at is, is that we have overprotected a lot of people from consequences. You know, just a little example of a little boy. You know, yeah, he's a baby. He don't know any better. He's going to pee on himself. But eventually, he's going to figure it out. I better hold it till mom puts the diaper on me. They smart kids. They're going to figure it out. You know, it, it's the things in life that you need to do to your children. You need to figure it out. Like, mom, I, oh, I got, a, I got a, a science project due to tomorrow, and I haven't got nothing of it done. I'm going to get an F and fail and spend myself, my, spend my life all over again in the fifth grade. And, you're gonna, and mom, what does mom do? To the rescue. I got an idea. She pulls out all her craft stuff, and they make this little thing, and they help her get her. He helps the student get it, her child get an A. But she did all the work. But you know what it really should be is like this here. Look, son, daughter, you don't want to put it off. If you got to stay up all night, you better stay up all night. You better get it done. Because I'm going to tell you what, you come home with less than a C, you're grounded from the TV, you're grounded from this, the, the, the video games, you're grounded from your phone, your friends, you're, you're grounded from life, and you're going to stay, and you're going to do this, chores, and you know, and, and, it, and, and it should be things like that. But what are we doing? We're rescuing our children from things like that, and not the consequences of it. I, I remember one time, our one boy, Derek, he got in trouble at school, and, uh, and, and, and he turned around, I think it was on the bus, and, and he ended up having to do some things, uh, or have to stay in uh, detention after school and, and since he's like well that's not fair to me I gotta go out of my way to go get him out of school after and not ride the bus you know that that's you're, you're punishing me and not him I want you to do something to him so what did he have to do he had to help the janitor out after school he had to go around and pick up trash that's what I'm talking about 
You, you need to be doing some things for your kids to pay consequences. This is not like, like you, your daughter, you gave her a car, a nice car, and then she wrecked it. Oh, my car, Daddy. And you want to feel, oh, pretty, I'm sorry, baby girl. I'll get you another $35,000 car. Uh, just hold on. Let's go down there and buy you one. No, that's what I'm saying. She wrecked the car. She needs to pay for it. And actually, she should pay for her own car. Then she'll realize the cost and value of it. And then she won't be so reckless about destroying stuff. These are the needy, the needy, we, to, to stop the needy, we need to even start in our own families, in our own children, we need to look at that. It's, it's kind of perfect example, as in Luke chapter 15, there was a father, his son got an attitude, and he says, Dad, I want my money, I know the inheritance that you owe me, I know you're still alive and you're not dead, but I still want my inheritance and I want to get out of here. I'm tired of being in this place, and so he gave him his money. So he went out and party and smoked some weed and had some beers and had some women, and he just had a great old time, and the next thing you know, but he lost all of it. And he found that he had no friends when he had no money and next thing you know he's he's down in the slop with the pigs in, in the pig pen and he's just like you know uh, life is over all oh, poor woe is me you know but did, did dad come and say here son i got here's some money get you come on back home and just let's get out of that pig pen no dad left him right there in the pig pen so he would come to his senses Sometimes you've got to leave them go through the crap that they're going through because of their choices. Stupid is and stupid does, you know. And let them pay the consequences of their lives. And in that, they will come to their senses and know that they need Jesus Christ. They need a Savior. I, I had the opportunity to lead a... Um, to, to, to lead a young lady to Christ this past week. And, you know, in, in her situation, you know, she's going through some things and she's making some decisions. She's being very selfish. And in those decisions, you know, I say, like, you know what? You, you, you're, I know exactly what your problem is. And, and intensively, she's listening. Like, she's got to do something to fix this whole mess. You know, and I says, your problem is, is you need Jesus. She looked at me kind of funny. How do, how do you, why do you figure that? Well, first off, let me ask you this straight out question. If you and your aunt would go drive down the road and somebody would cross the, the road and hit you guys straight on and your aunt lived and you died, where would you go? I, I don't know. See, our thinking in a lot of times in the need and in the restoration of people's lives is, is eternally. It's the idea of saying, you may think you're a Christian, or you think you may because you go to church, or your mama went to church, or your grandma went to church, you may think you have Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but you really don't because you don't live like it. You know, you could tell a fruit, you know, what it is from the tree. You know, you look at an orange tree, you don't see apples on it, do you? No. You look at an, a, an orange tree, you see oranges on it. So you look at a Christian and you see, do you see Christian fruit? You know, gentleness, kindness, love, meekness, joy, long-suffering. Those are fruits of the Spirit. You see that? Heck no. I see them biting people's heads off, yelling and cussing and carrying on. Well, then I really wonder about your salvation. I'm not the judge, but I can look at a tree and tell what's on the tree. You need Jesus. So before we move on to the last one, you know, so first off, we, we, we say, God, help me give, give people what they truly need. Be truthful with them, not just what they want. Then we, we looked at, God, help me stay out of your way by not continually rescuing people from their consequences. And then there is, God, help me remember that I'm in need too and that you are always the answer. Psalm 75 says this, Yet I am poor and needy. Come quickly to me, O God. You are my help and my deliverer, O Lord. Do not delay. David wrote this. He found himself as a king, and as he could have, snap his fingers and get whatever he wanted, he found he was in need of the Lord. That How many of us that we're always in such a rush to help everybody else that we are also in need. We're failing in helping everybody else because we are also in need. 
Because the problem is, is if you think God needs you to meet everyone else's needs, then your God is too small. Well, God needs me to help them out there. I, I, you know, I can give them 20 bucks. Or God needs me to help them out there for give them some place to live. Or God needs me to help them, you know, they can borrow my car. Or God needs me to help them, you know, they can use some of my, have some of my clothes. Or they can have some of my stuff there. God needs me to do that. If you're thinking that, that God needs you for all of that, then your God is too small. Well, my son, you know, he's getting a divorce and he's got nowhere to live. Are you getting in God's way from God getting a hold of him by you doing things for him and going back to the ways when he was a teenager? If so, when he pays the consequences, you're going to pay him too. If I were you, get out of the way. Let God do his thing with your, with your children. Because if you think God needs you to fix everyone else, then your God is way too small. You need to get out of the way and let God be God because He is great and powerful and He can do it. He can fix it. He can provide for it. He can give somebody a job that needs a job just like that. Seen it done many times. Somebody just wants to say, hey, you know, out of the blue, God's laid it on somebody else's heart and they bring some finances or they bring some food. And nobody's like, how do they know? I didn't put it on Facebook. I didn't put it on Snapchat. I didn't put it out there for anybody to know I needed this. And it shows up at your house. Because your God is that big, if not bigger, to handle and meet your needs. But for you, you're just as poor as David is. He is a king. He had money out all over the place. But he found himself in his heart. He was poor and broken. Some of you are going through these things in life. Your struggles in, in relationships, jobs, uh, uh, family members sick, and you're finding yourself, I just can't do it all. I just can't do it all. I just can't do it all. I'm there myself. I'm finding myself looking around the house. I got this to do. I got that to do. I get this to do. And then all of a sudden I get interrupted by this or by, uh, by a sickness, by, by, by children or by visitors or whatever it is. I, I just, and I'm not getting it done. And I'm feeling inadequate. I'm feeling poor and I'm feeling broken. Because why? A curse of this world visited my house through my wife. What am I going to do? I'm going to lean on Jesus. He's going to be my strength. When I can't do nothing, I say, Lord, help me. This situation, I can't, I can't help me. My wife is hurting. Lord, help her. What, do I, what, what else can I do? I can't, I can't keep giving her too much medicine or I'm going to really hurt her. I, I can't keep doing you know, other things and, and leaving her. So I got to let it go. So what is it today that in your, your, your life that you feel broken? You feel needy? Because you can't help somebody else out if your, your need is so great and you're so broken. You know, it's my greatest example. I love this example because especially since I've been able to fly several times, you know, when you're sitting in there and the instructors are saying, you got to put your seatbelt in, you clip it, you push together, you make it tight around your waist, you know, like that. And then they would get to the air mask thing, you know. So if the, 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 the air, grab, air thing comes on there, a little flashy light comes on there, and they drop the air mask there, you take it and you put it on your face first. You put it on your face first before you help somebody else out. Why? Because you need oxygen. And if you're not breathing right, you can't help anybody. It's the same with your relationship with Jesus Christ. If you are not holding tight to your relationship with Jesus Christ and realizing you are broken, you're not perfect. I'm not perfect. God's intent of, of perfect is very, very high. Jesus said, if you look at a woman with lust, you have committed adultery. That's pretty high. If you look, if you think hate towards your brother in Christ, you commit murder. That's pretty high. So in that, we're sinning every day and you're trying to say you're okay. You're lying to yourself. And you need God to fix you. And you need God to make you to the person that He has purposed you to be. 
And to do that, you will line yourself up and you will be able to help the needy. And the needy might be sometimes to say no. Pastor, you're supposed to help everybody. Mm, check with God. Check with God. He might have them in line just so he can get a hold of them and, and just bring them back to him. And you don't want to get in the way of a freight train called God. You get run over by that freight train, it's going to hurt for a long time. So as we close, if you bow your heads. For those of you that are believers in Jesus Christ, first thing I want to just ask you, if you'll just check with your own heart. Your need. Your, your, your mutual brokenness of, of David with David. You're, you're, you're rich outside. You got everything going on. But, you know, but your spirit, you're poor in spirit. And, and you need to be fixed. You're needy is Jesus. For those other of you that, that like this young lady this, this, this past week, your need is Jesus Christ. To really ask you directly to your face and, you know, and to your heart. If you died today, where would you go? Oh, I would go to heaven. Why would you go to heaven? Because you're, you think you're a good person? Good, good people are going to die and go to hell. All, all the, and it happens every day. The only way to heaven is through Jesus Christ. And that is, it says that if you'll confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins and God raised him from the dead, you will confess with your mouth that and ask for forgiveness of your sins and then be baptized with the Holy Spirit, you will be saved. And so in that, that, that God is saying to you, I want to save you today. Your need is Jesus Christ. Your need is salvation. So as we pray, will you, will you ask God for that help you need Right here, right now. God, we just thank you for the opportunity to, to honor your word. We, 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 we pray the words of Isaiah that your word will go forth and it will accomplish the things whereunto it is sent. And Father, we just again, we just pray for those are, uh, believers that are, are they're wanting to be the good Christian and help people around them and show Jesus. You know, but sometimes we're, we're end up hurting our own families and ourselves because we're getting involved in something we're not supposed to get involved with. So I pray for wisdom. Your word says, if anyone lack wisdom to ask you, you will freely give it to them. And so we ask that for wisdom to be able to know how to help the needy, to get involved with them or point them some other direction or sit down them and, and show them how to do a budget or sit down and show how many, or help them get a job, you know, or sit down and go online and help them use your computer or our computers to, to fill out applications, you know, or, or, or things like that. God, give us wisdom to be able to do that. But for right now, those right now that need Jesus, they're, they're not too sure. Or they're, you know, maybe they're kind of just tossing it back and forth about going to heaven. That right now their need, they've got this void inside of them. They're trying all this other stuff. That, you know, they're, they're going to the, the lake and to the, they're buying the, the houses and they're buying the cars and the boats and they're doing all these other things, you know, but there's still this void inside of them. It's just not being met. And that's you. That's you. They need you, Jesus. So that you'll hear their prayer right now of salvation. Saying, Heavenly Father, save me from my sins. Jesus, I believe you died for me and you rose again. So I could go to heaven and, and follow you. Baptize me with your Holy Spirit so I can serve you always. Thank you for meeting my needs of salvation. Empower me to meet the needs of, uh, that you have me here and my purpose in this world. To point other people to you, Jesus. So my life will, could count for your glory. Thank you for this new life, Father. In Jesus' name. God, hear their prayer of salvation right now. Give them courage to tell somebody. And just, uh, again, help them get into, if they're watching online, help them get into a good Bible-believing church and, and, and follow you. Give them wisdom and how to follow you. Stick some people around them to, to encourage them and disciple them. God, I love you. Jesus, I love you. Holy Spirit, I love you. I bless these people in the name of Jesus with your love. Amen.